Hello, Mark Fletcher here. I'm starting a five-part series on IFR flying using two of my favorite tools, X-Plane 11 and Pilot to ATC. I've spent uh, countless hours attempting to fly from uh, my departure to a destination, communicating successfully with ATC along the way, and after many failures, I finally have managed it, though it's still pretty rough. And I wanted to make these videos before I forgot everything I've learned. So I hope you find this information useful and challenging. I purposely have not tried too much to clean things up because I thought it's more educational to see the struggles and the mistakes. And the mistakes are not all mine. Explain makes some mistakes and Pilot to ATC makes some mistakes and so you're going to see it all. So I've titled my series Flying IFR in Explain Using Pilot to ATC. Part one of the video is this introduction. Part two takes you from engine startup to taxi. Part three covers takeoff to the approach. Part 4 focuses on just the approach, and Part 5 concludes with landing to taxi to parking. So the tools that I use for building a flight plan, there's three tools that I primarily use. The first one is SimBrief, SimBrief.com. I find it's good for discovering routes that are commonly used and kind of get you uh, started really quickly with a basic route that you can start to fine tune. But I don't spend much time with SimBrief. The second tool is SkyVector, skyvector.com. This is my main reference. This is loaded with uh, maps and charts and really great stuff it's 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 just really a super uh, site and and if you do anything at all with uh flying at all sky vector is really great so the third tool and probably my most important and the main tool that i use is pilot to atc itself and the reason i use this instead of other things is it's kind of an insider it's inside the game while you're flying and so obviously it's connected and it knows uh, what's going on and it, to me it's just the most important reference and one point that I like to make about Pilot ATC it's an application rather than a plug-in and what that means is it runs outside of the game so you don't have to have X-Plane running in order to use it so you can sort of use it as a planning tool and bring it up before you ever bring up uh, X-Plane and you can configure things and get things set up so I really like that uh, and I spend most of my time uh, in Pilot to ATC so uh, it, it can design a flight plan it can show the route on a map it contains charts that's a little bit buggy, at least I find. And really important to me is that it can automatically transfer the flight plan into the GPS units in your plane. So let's start a flight plan. Kind of show you how I go through this. I start with a quick look at SimBrief, so let me bring over my browser. That's Sky Vector there. We'll look at that in a minute. Sky Brief. Sky Brief. Uh, I'm sorry. Simbrief.com. You do have to create an account. So I have an account here. You go to Dispatch and Dispatch System. And down here you see Create New Flight. and then the flight info here you've got your departing airport so I'm going to be taking off from KRDU 
that's Raleigh Durham and I'm arriving at Fayetteville which is K-F-A-Y that's the Fayetteville uh, Regional Airport south of Raleigh about 60 about 60 miles and it automatically plugged in KCLT here as an alternate you may or may not want to use that that's Charlotte we'll look at how close those places are so then uh, I don't pay much attention to this advanced aircraft options down here uh, I guess some of that could be useful but I don't pay too much attention oh yeah aircraft type since I'm flying a Cessna 172 I run down till I find that this this will have a lot of effect about uh, your cruising altitudes and ground speeds and things like that so the probably the most important part of all of this is the route down here suggested routes it shows you the top four uh, routes that are commonly used and honestly I, I don't like much of any of these other than this last one I'll show you why but that kind of gives you a rough idea of how to get started so you could you could put these waypoints in and kind of see how they map out and it shows you down here here's the first one POB and FAY so here's uh, Raleigh-Durham and there's the route at uh, POB Pope that's actually Pope Air Force Base and then on into uh, Fayetteville Regional the one I like and I'll show you why is this one with hooks 3 it's still pretty direct and it's got waypoints fitting and hooks and I'll keep you in suspense as to why I like that one and I'll show you soon okay well let's take a look at the second tool sky vector this is uh, obviously a sectional chart and uh, you can see Raleigh Durham here there's Raleigh Durham and Fayetteville is right here so we're about 60 miles apart and as I was saying Charlotte is an alternate but that would be a pretty good haul if you couldn't land and make a trip over to Charlotte what I like about looking at this view here this kind of shows you uh, um, the state of um, of North Central North Carolina we have uh, Class C airport here Arleigh, uh, Raleigh Durham over here is uh, Greensboro and that's a Class C and of course Pope Air Force Base is a Class C and Fayetteville is a Class C and we only have one Class B airport in our area and this is the Charlotte airport down here this blue blue ring of course uh, is that so that's it's kind of fun to look at so anyway what we care about since we're doing IFR flight is the low altitude chart so let's click on world low here and again here's Raleigh and here's Fayetteville and the bad thing about this is it doesn't show uh, a lot of the waypoints it just shows the major ones so this is not terribly useful for what we're trying to do but it we can uh, bring up a flight plan here and put in KRDU and a destination of uh, KFAY and it draws a line let me back out here it draws a line from RDU down to Fayetteville and then you can put waypoints in here 
and it will draw it will modify the line based on those waypoints so it's really nice that, that way what i really like about sky vector is if you come up here where it says raleigh durham and you hover over it it shows you all of the charts so i can click on on that chart and that that brings up a diagram of rdu's uh, airport as well as all your instrument approaches there's all your SIDs and there's all your stars and you can do the same thing for Fayetteville there's the airport diagram there's all your instrument approaches and Fayetteville is just a regional airport so it only has one SID and that's the Monty, Monty 4 SID so well, so what that basically tells us is we know that we're not going to have uh, any stars in our flight plan. Of course, they're so close together, you couldn't really have a, a, a SID and a star anyway. Since our SID that I'm getting ready to show you is uh, takes us pretty much all the way down uh, here near Pope Air Force Base, so it's pretty close anyway. So that's SIM brief. So now, let's take a look now at the main tool that I use, that is Pilot to ATC. And here's what that looks like. In part two, I'll show you how to file the plan and get a clearance, as well as transfer the plan to the aircraft's GPS units. But since we're offline, here, that is, we're not uh, running X plane. There's just so much that you can do in here. First thing we want to do is take a look at these configuration options. There's a button over here on the right side, config. And if you click that, you get this window. And the first tab that we want to look at is this flight plan tab so let's click on that these first three uh, notice they're unchecked I believe that the default is for these to be selected this allows ATC to assign SID stars and approaches to your flight plan based on weather conditions and things like that and then if you were trying to simulate uh, real life here you would want these to be selected but since we're training we want this whatever SIDs and stars and approaches that we choose to actually be used when the flight plan gets filed so that's why I've left those unchecked later on when uh, I want to fly and simulate reality I would turn these back on and uh, along that same line this option here force pilot runway selection I have that turned on and that forces ATC to to use in the flight plan whatever runway uh, I ask for and so even if I use a runway that's not in use pilot to ATC will select that which obviously is not uh, reality but if for training purposes, I, I, I would like that. Also, uh, and this is a setting that you're going to want uh, no matter what, I think. You want the uh, Pilot to ATC application to match uh, X-Plane's runway uh, if known. And it doesn't always know that. So you, sometimes you kind of have to help that along and we'll look at some settings that kind of help that situation out some. Uh, these export options are really nice. Uh, I have uh, these first two here selected and basically what that means is Pilot ATC has the capability of transferring the flight plan over to uh, the Garmin radios that are in your aircraft and uh, inside the uh, the Garmin unit 
you have the ability to, to uh, locate this flight plan that got exported from Pilot ATC and loaded into the radios so you don't have to enter all those waypoints uh, a second time so it's a real nice convenience and this first selection here import export SID star approach waypoints if you don't select that it will leave off whatever the SID stars and approaches that you set up in Pilot ATC you'll only get basically the in route uh, waypoints so I like to have that selected so it pulls everything over uh, that includes those also uh, this is the, this, the option that really makes things happen export cleared flight plan so once your flight plan gets cleared that is you talk to clearance delivery and you uh, tell them that you're ready to copy IFR clearance and they give you the clearance whenever that happens this uh, option then tells pilot ATC to create this file that can then be read in inside the uh, Garmin radios inside the uh, aircraft so you'll want those two and, and obviously we don't want this last one selected since these are specific to uh, P3D and, and Microsoft Flight Simulator so we leave those off. The other really important part is that you want to uh, tell Pilot ATC what your path is to the flight plan that the Garmin radios then would read and so uh, I use C colon X plane 11 which is where my X plane installation is the output folder and then FMS plans which is where uh, you know like if you're in a, a jet or something and use FMS to build a flight plan that's where those would get stored let's look at this folder so here's my uh, explain folder here's all the stuff that gets installed when you when you install explain and output is this output folder so if we go there you see all this stuff and here's FMS plans and so here's all the FMS plans that uh, have been built for various reasons now when pilot to ATC creates one of these it always puts P2A FPL at the end of the name so these two well these three this one and this one and this one were all created uh, as I described here uh, inside pilot to ATC this uh, video series uh, is a flight that I took from uh, KRDU down to Fayetteville so this third flight plan here is the one that actually is being used uh, for these videos so that's uh, how that works there's a few more settings that we care about one is in the weather tab here WX so if you go WX weather source I highly recommend that you set that to sim weather and that forces pilot to ATC to get its weather from the X-Plane uh, simulator rather than other ways here's other ways you could do it and in order for that to happen you have to tell pilot to ATC where your base directory is for X-Plane and show you how that works so let's back up here to the base level of X-Plane whenever you uh, set X-Plane's weather to uh, read will, uh, real, uh, real weather the real weather uh, current settings match real world conditions I think it's called whenever you set that from inside explain it creates a file here called metar.rwx 
and if you're familiar with meter files so you can read that file and understand it there's all kinds of programs out on the internet that can interpret that file for you and, and show the contents of it and you could actually edit this I've done that to I want a certain wind and things like that I can go in the meter and make that happen so this is the way the mechanics of this works pilot to ATC you tell it where that is and it will pilot to ATC will actually go through that path and read that meter file and this gets updated every like five minutes or whatever it is uh, inside explain when you use real weather uh, conditions so that's I think uh, the way to do it. it it really works quite well so I recommend that you set that up that way and uh, in can in in uh, uh, in addition to to this tab we also want to go into ATC settings and down under MISC here here's an option pilot to ATC provides ATIS if this is selected then it's pilot to ATC that provides the ATIS report when you listen to ATIS uh, I like to turn that off so that explain is providing the ATIS because I want explain to do as much as I can let it do and then I want pilot to ATC basically be a slave uh, to explain to find weather and active runways and things like that as much as I can let explain do I want that to happen so I leave that unchecked so I believe that that is it for uh, configuration settings let me just comment uh, about if you want to set up manual weather like you want uh, a real strong wind crosswind or something and you're practicing crosswind landings or something like that the best way to do that is to set in explain to read the meter file and then you could edit the meter file and change the wind direction or whatever and get it to work that way uh, I've done that it's it's a little bit technical but it, it works pretty well so that I think is it for configuration so we can close this out Uh, the next thing I want to look at is how to get charts from inside Pilot to ATC. There's a tab over here called Terps, and if you click on that, you get a window that looks like this. Now, let me just say right up front that at least I found this to be pretty buggy, and you're going to see how buggy this thing really is. For one thing, I couldn't even figure out when I first brought this thing up exactly what I'm supposed to do. It didn't really say. But I have learned to come over here and click on these dashes. And when you click on it, you'll get this window up here. And so I can put my uh, airport in here, KRDU. And then it seems to go to sleep and it even says it's not responding and you have to be really careful here at this point to not click on anything you just have to sit and wait so let's just kind of wait this out this is really painful but I think it's worth uh, the misery of uh, kind of suffering through this because these charts are actually pretty handy so let's wait this out And if you're like me, you're, you're thinking, man, this is not even working. This thing's hung up or whatever. But just wait it out. I have no idea why this takes so long. Actually, what it's doing is it's going off to a, uh, a government site to download these charts. And then this is weird, too. It, it immediately thinks that I want to 
download this takeoff minimums and so it, that's what it's saying here so I X these out see it's going to www.faa.gov so naturally it's a government site so it's extremely slow and buggy huh. so I've X that out now what I want to do is go over to diagram and then I want to open and so now I get this little window here with a tab and it shows the airport diagram for the Raleigh-Durham International Airport then I want to go to the SID because I know that I, I'm going to want a SID so I click on SID and again this thing wants to read the very first one which I don't want so I X that out then I can pull down here and I want the hooks 3 we looked at that one earlier so I click on hooks 3 say open now this opens a second tab and you can see the hooks 3 departure RNAV for Raleigh Durham and it shows my waypoint fitting here's the hooks waypoint and this is actually about uh, 17 or 18 miles from there to the Fayetteville uh, VOR which is right on the right on the airport so we're gonna want that and now we're gonna want the approaches for Fayetteville so again we come over here where it says KRDU we click on it pops this back up now I say K F F A Y enter it goes to sleep again so here we wait it out it says it's not responding so don't worry about that be sure you don't click on anything so we wait we wait we wait we wait good time to have some coffee while we're waiting feel free and I'm letting you wait with me on this because I want you to realize how long this takes and not you just have to be patient if you start clicking on buttons it just delays things and again here it's it thinks I want this first SID so it's trying to open it so I just X out here now we're at Fayetteville so I want to look at the diagram so I'll click on diagram open now as you can see it's opened up another tab and this time it's for the Fayetteville Granis Field. So there's the airport diagram. We still have the other ones. There's Raleigh Durham. There's our Hooks departure. And there's Fayetteville. Now we want the approach. So we click on the approach tab. And again, it thinks it wants the first one. Open this up. And we have already determined that we want the runway 4 RNAV so we click on that open it so here's the RNAV runway 4 now just as an alternate in case I had to go missed approach or something like that and I need an alternate I am going to also get the RNAV for runway 10 so let's get that one open that so now we've got our never runway 10 so we have all of these tabs there's the airport diagram for RDU there's our hooks 3 departure SID there's our airport diagram for Fayetteville there's our RNF 4 there's our RNF 10 so this window is really separate completely from 
pilot to ATC. You can you can actually close down pilot to ATC and it will not close this window. And the nice thing about it is we don't have to go through all this misery of it downloaded because you've already downloaded them all. So we can exit out of Terps. And although it disappeared on me, it's still there. So you can you can put this on your desktop someplace. If I can figure out where to grab it, and there we go. And you can move it around. And as you can see, if I icon the uh, Pilot to ATC program, this is still there. And you can icon that as well as you need to. So now that we've got some charts, let's build a flight plan. So the first thing we want to do in building a flight plan, we're, we're going to use this section here, the flight plan tab. You open that, you see the flight plan tab. Well, obviously we're new in IFR, so it's an IFR. Uh, plan and one of the first things you're going to want to do is choose a cruising altitude and the way to determine that is if you come over into this map area let's zoom out and get over to the US now if you're connected in the game it will know where you are and it will op it will open this up and and show you really where you actually are but we're having to do it by hand since we're offline so let me there's Charlotte and here's Raleigh let's zoom in a little bit There's our airport right there. This this is a street map. I like the street map when I'm flying because I I know the area, so I know where the highways are and I know, you know, Holly Springs and so forth, US one and all of that. So I I like to start here just kind of because I kind of know where I'm at. But where we want to look right now is the uh, sectional chart. And that's the CHT button. So here's the sectional chart for the Raleigh-Durham area. Zoom out a little bit. It's kind of hard to see now. But there's Raleigh-Durham and there's Pope Air Force Base and that right there is the Fayetteville Regional Airport. So in order to determine the cruise altitude, I always like to use a sectional for this and then you look at these numbers here. This tells you in this particular uh, sector of the chart the highest obstacle on the ground and inside this box the highest obstacle is actually 2,500 feet and so we're going to be going down to Fayetteville so you're heading in this direction so we know we have to be at least 2,500 feet to clear obstacles there and then as you get on down here it looks like the highest obstacle is 1,200 feet and the I uh, the uh, 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 FAA rule for altitudes I always learn this little rhyme or phrase here that it's odd to fly east and I think about go west young man right you want to go west but it's odd to go east so it's this little thing that I've memorized so in other words if you're flying east you want to use odd altitudes and if you're flying west you want to use even altitudes and we are going slightly west as if you looked at the flight plan you'd see it going slightly west so we know that we want to use even altitudes well we know we can't use 2,000 because 2,000 is less than 
the highest obstacle so we know we at least need to move up to 4,000 feet and just for fun I've chosen 6,000 feet to be my cruising altitude now if you were flying VFR you would add 500 feet to that so if this was a VFR flight instead of using 6,000 feet I would use 6,500 and you can you can set the cruising altitude I've already done it but let me show you how you do that you just click on it right there and then you can type in 6,000 like so so that sets your cruising altitude now over here is the plan uh, ground speed Cessna 172 ah uh, you're lucky if you can do a hundred but I set that to be a hundred you could set it at 90 I guess if you wanted to and that just kinda helps the timing on your on your waypoint legs and stuff like that and your overall trip time and all of that uh, descent rate 500 feet per minute is pretty much exactly what a Cessna 172 ought to be so we can set that to 500 and that's pretty much all you need to think about uh, about those things now before I go any further let me mention this auto plan we can't do this right now because we're offline but if you're inside the game and you've got your radios up your airplane is running you could click auto plan tell it your departure and your destination airports and it will create a, a route for you with the waypoints and all of that so you might want to play with that I rarely do that because I kind of like to do it myself so we could click new here which you don't need to since we don't have one but if you had something in here from an old flight plan or whatever you would click new to start a new one and the very first thing that we need to do is set our departure uh, airport and that's a waypoint so you click waypoint there and we type in KRDU here so now we have KRDU Raleigh Durham International as our first waypoint you click waypoint again and this would be our destination so that'd be KFAY hit return so now as you can see over here on the chart it draws a line between KRDU and Fayetteville let's just for fun move to a low out low IFR in route map so you click on that I don't like this because it shows all these airways and this is a mess but those are all the various airways and you see that we're right now we're on a on an airway this is Victor 136 that goes from Raleigh down to Fayetteville and again I just like to be on the street map so I can go street map and it still shows the line and you can you can try out the different ones here's a terrain map shows terrain satellite map which actually shows you satellite imagery and all of that but I like the street map the best okay so from our discovery of looking at uh, the route we decided we wanted to use a SID so you click on SID and this loads departure airport KRDU and you can choose which runway you're departing from and we're just kinda guessing here that we would use uh, runway 05 I think actually I might have used two three rights or yeah, let's try two three two three right and again this is based on the winds and this doesn't know anything about that since we're offline but let's choose that and then we select a departure and we're wanting the hooks to well see this only gives us hooks two hooks three is what we found in sky vector but these are older charts so hooks two is the best we can do 
so we choose that and then we choose the transition it shows you uh, the route we don't want to go all the way to Fayetteville because we're going to need to pick up an approach so we want to get as far as we can get to Fayetteville um, but not actually go all the way so the, the closest we can do for that is the hooks transition so we want to choose hooks like that and that uh, I was telling you I was holding you in suspense about this the reason I like this hooks too is because it's only 17 miles from here to the Fayetteville Airport and it's a pretty reasonable jump from there to the transition point to the approach so once you're satisfied that you've got the SID the way you want it you click load now it it actually creates a, a top of descent point for you and charts it out over here on the map so you see we're KDRDU go to Fitton that green arrow is the top of descent this is the point with which uh, approach controller will call out start descending to altitude 2300 or whatever it is and that's when you would start descending on down to the approach point so the only thing left to do now is add the approach to do that you click on the approach button and here we are Fayetteville Regional and they're expecting arrival runways to be 0, 4, and 1, 0 and again it may not be the case but we're going to assume uh, runway 4 here's all the runway choices so runway 4 and then we want to choose whatever approach we want and we've already decided that we want to do an RNAV to runway 4 so we choose that and then the transition you have vectors to Zaji or Zaji let me bring up the chart and runway 4 is here if you look at this you see Zaji is right here that's the uh, intermediate approach fix IAF Zaji so you would be flying from the hooks transition to Zaji and you can either do that uh, what's called a full procedure where you're actually doing the procedure yourself or you can have ATC vector you to Zaji so those are the two choices and because I'm practicing IFR procedures I want to do the full procedure so I will click the Zaji transition and as you can see there's a, a holding turnaround or procedure turn if you want to call it that and we'll load that now we're seeing the full flight plan so here's the hooks transition and it transitions from hooks to Zaji and we're flying south and we're f we're coming into there's the airport there's runway 4 heading uh, 04 northeast so in order to get turned around we need to do a procedure and so once we get to Zaji we'll follow this racetrack on around I think this is heading 218 and then we'll turn to 038 and we'll take inbound back to Zaji then down to Sinlo then to Yisbu and then on into the airport if you look at the chart you can see that's exactly how this happens once you arrive at, at Zaji right here here's the top 
here's the top of the uh, glide slope that's 2300 feet then you begin descending at uh, the standard 3% uh, rate on a heading of 038 degrees at 1900 feet you should be at Sinlo which is here then you continue on down to Yisbu Yisbu is right there and then since the uh, X530 GPS in X-Plane is capable of uh, vertical guidance they call that LPV it's an LPV GPS and so you can use this first category here LPV the decision altitude in other words if you can't see the runway by the time you reach this altitude you have to call missed approach that altitude is 389 feet with uh, 2,400 feet I guess of visibility I forget exactly anyway that's uh, half a, about a half a mile of visibility but the key here is 389 feet indicated on your uh, altimeter. If you do have to call a missed approach or if ATC tells you to go missed approach, that's what this red section is here. If you have to go missed approach, you fly this red line to the holding point Ujoro and then you do a holding pattern and you see that on the chart as well up here there's the Ujuro missed approach climb to 2000 feet direct Ujuro and hold so I believe that's everything I wanted to show you and you can see that Pilot to ATC does show maps out all the turns for the holding pattern and uh, gets does the turnaround. So here you show you uh, arrive at Zaji direct. You do your procedure turn here. You go back to Zaji, down to Sinlo, down to Yisbo, and then finally land at uh, KRDU. It shows you that you're using a hooks to runway 23 with a hooks transition and we're using an approach of RNAV runway 04 from Zaji. So if you're satisfied with that you click validate and if there were any errors with that route it would it would tell you you'd get a pop-up saying there was something wrong but it looks good and you could actually save this flight plan here you could click save and it would ask you to put in a file name and then once you get inside uh, X-Plane and you want to load the flight plan you wouldn't have to type all this back in you could just simply load it and then it would put the flight plan back in at that point so that's pretty much uh, all you can do offline uh, so we'll pick things up once we get in the game that's part two and I will see you there so long